I want to kind of talk about obfuscation or PowerShell obfuscation, code obfuscation, text obfuscation in general. Um, and so I have a project I'm working on. It's kind of a novel privilege escalation attack that I'm going to be using. I won't say too much about it, but um, this is part of it where I'm going to do a reverse TCP shell. Um, and so I'm going to jump right into it and show off Invoke Obfuscation by Daniel Bohannon. Uh, he is a FireEye and Mandiant employee, or, or was at least, uh, and this is a personal project of his. So I'll go ahead and show it off. All right, so if we can see my screen here, we see my malicious code, right? It's just basically got a cleanup function, and then I have an IP address, a port, right? I'm going to set a system.netsockets TCP client, and we're going to do a connection over 443. And the reason the victim's going to connect out over 443 is it just makes it a lot easier to get through firewalls. It's, it's going to look like normal traffic, uh, potentially. So we're going to go ahead and, and look at this, though, by using a tool called Invoke Obfuscation. So you basically load this PowerShell after Git cloning. Um, you you import the module, and then you run the module. He did some fancy, you know, kind of pretty text to uh, to make this uh, look good. But essentially, this is the tool. So the intention here is for us to set a couple of options. Um, you can say show options, right? There's some actual great information right here uh, telling you what to do, like the read the RTFM, if you will, right? Um, so set uh, script. I misspelled this last time and looked like an idiot for a bit. Um, path. Uh, and we're going to say C colon backslash scripts backslash and I think the name of this was just malicious code yeah dot ps1 malicious code dot ps1 one problem is if you're trying to do this with defender around it can get kind of funky and try to uh, to try to take that over um, and and get rid of it so I, I put this in a directory that wasn't synced with OneDrive and, and so I could have the ability to um, you know save it you know because otherwise you could paste the block in if you'd prefer but this does set it What's really cool is then once you see that when you show options now, it's gonna have um, it's gonna have taken that code and imported it as the script block, essentially for this. So we now have what we need, um, and so we're gonna go in and say uh, encoding, right? Uh, we're gonna use um, a secure string, AES a secure string. So we're gonna encrypt it. Uh, so we're gonna do five and. It's going to tell us here's your block and it obviously says hey it's redacted because it's too long right it's massive um so we're going to go ahead and say now copy which will put that in our clipboard um, and we're going to come back to a new powershell file we've created and we're just going to paste that and essentially it's going to have a massive secure string that is then loaded uh, as the powershell file so that's essentially it there's a lot more options in here if you notice that you can do um, and the instructions are pretty good. Like here's a tutorial, show the help menu again, options, clear the screen, obviously execute um, to run it locally, copy it to clipboard, write it out to a disk if you wanted to like outfile it to a PowerShell already ahead of time, um, reset the obfuscation if you wanted to, undo the last obfuscation. And I think you could even probably do um, some rounds of obfuscation potentially if you just took one and then re-obfuscated that in a different manner. But um, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's a really good uh, obfuscation tool that I'm barely scratching the surface of knowing all the different things uh, I can learn. And definitely if caffeinated is true, by the way, in this instance. So thank you. That was Invoke Obfuscation. And I'll have a video on the, on the privileged escalation attack here pretty soon. Thanks for checking in.